This is KGW News at Sunrise. It's not just druggies on the street. There are families who are in your neighborhood who are affected by this. The number of homeless students in Marion County is on the rise. Coming up this hour on Sunrise, we'll share more on this growing problem that includes more than 1,200 homeless kids in the Salem-Kaiser School District alone. And ODOT just got $20 million to help clean up Portland's highways. Coming up on Sunrise, how it plans to spend that money and why some people are opposed to the funding. All right, for this next story, uh, Rod Hill, I have to ask you, do you remember the show Good Times? Back I do, yes. Yeah, yeah. Remember J.J. Walker? J.J. What was his favorite word? Dynamite! Oh. <laughs> well, this exhibit, Rod, at OMSI, is dynamite! Wow, and it, really, it looks good on TV, <laughs> I'll tell you that. It's a dinosaur exhibit, but not just about any dinosaur. We're talking about tyrannosaurs, including... The big ones. The Tyrannosaurus Rex. Yeah, apparently this guy's name right here Ooh. is Scotty. What? Yeah, with a name like Scotty, <laughs> how can you be he scared? Looks right. <laughs> Scotty's so nice. <laughs> We're, gonna, <laughs> We're gonna have more from inside OMSI coming your way throughout the day here on Sunrise. Sweet, sweet Scotty. We'll visit back with him uh, in a little bit. Yeah. A sweet forecast, Rod. Can't wait for it. I slept in five extra minutes this morning <laughs> uh, because I said to myself, I don't have a whole lot to look at today, so I'm gonna take advantage of the extra five minutes of sleep. Yeah. You look well rested. I feel terrific. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> here's a look at, uh, we still have, here's radar, we still have some lingering showers. Uh, it's coming up around Astoria, coming up in the northwest. You see the activity really starting to fizzle over the Cascades. They had uh, like 16 inches of snow fall the past 24 plus hours up at Timberline. Most of us are going to be completely dry today, but don't be surprised if you find one of those lingering raindrops between now and, and say 8 o'clock this morning. We're at 41 degrees. There are some breaks in the cloud cover. Your day moving forward, becoming completely dry across the region and partly cloudy. Temps will be kind of where they have been lately. 49 at noon, 53, 54 degrees later this afternoon for high with light winds tomorrow. Mr. McGinnis, we think the temperature goes up back and, to you. and it keeps going up and up. <laughs> the 7 8 forecast looks gorgeous. All right, your morning commute out. It's Wallace and I five near the 205 interchange. Is there anybody on the, anybody? Yeah, there we go. There's a car 205 southbound on I five south. You can see it's pretty wide open. We take you to North Portland. I five up near the uh, interstate bridge. That looks good. I 205 coming off the Glen Jackson bridge. That looks pretty good. And a reminder, even though the precipitation is pretty much wound down chains, and traction tires still required as you head up over the Cascade Passes. That's a live look at government camp. It's still kind of icy up there. Guys? All right, Chris, we appreciate that update this morning. Well, an election year rematch between President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump is all but a done deal at this point. Former President Trump has secured enough delegates to seal the Republican nomination, and President Biden clinched the Democratic nomination after yesterday's primaries in Georgia, Mississippi, and in Washington. So we're going to start right there in Washington, of course. A look at the numbers so far from that primary shows that President Biden has garnered 87% of the vote in the state of Washington. On the Republican side, former President Donald Trump sits at about 74%. The other candidates, though, have already dropped out of this race. Nikki Haley, though, still managed to get 22% of the votes in Washington. New this morning, a bicyclist is in the hospital with life-threatening injuries after a crash with an SUV in downtown Portland. It happened around 9.30 last night at Southwest 3rd and Alder. Portland police say the driver stayed at the scene and is cooperating with the investigation. And later today, in a public meeting online, you'll be able to learn more about tolling in the Portland metro area. This after Governor Tina Kotek called on state transportation officials to cancel tolling plans for large sections of I-5 and I-205. A note, the project to build a new I-5 bridge with tolls would still move forward. Also, tolling the Abernethy Bridge between West Lynn and Oregon City would still be on the table. We heard from Clackamas County commissioners who all want to see the idea of tolls wiped out altogether. I'd like to thank the governor for this pause on tolling, uh, which the citizens of Clackamas County repeatedly have expressed their opinion on. They don't want it. Two public meetings on tolling plans are happening this month. The first taking place today at 1 p.m. online. You can watch it on the Oregon Toll Program's YouTube channel. The next listening session is next Monday. Oregon lawmakers have passed a $20 million spending bill to help clean up freeways in the state like I-405, 
205 and I-84. So what I says, the money will go towards cleaning up trash and homeless camps along the roadways. It'll also be used for preventative measures like fencing, barricades, and lighting to encourage people not to park and camp in unsafe areas. And some of the money will be used to hire outside contractors as well. And we're able to partner with contractors and with the city. So we have not only our maintenance crews, but we have a lot of other folks, a lot of more bodies that we're able to put towards this work. Um, so I think it should go a long ways. You should see a bigger impact than you have in the past when we try to do this piece by piece. Sounds like a good idea, but not everyone is on board with the funding. Oregon Representative Travis Nelson said on social media that he withdrew his support because he's not certain whether the cleanup would actually last. If Oregon Governor Tina Kotek is quick to sign off on this, ODOT hopes to start the cleanup efforts no later than the beginning of April. More than 1,200 Salem-Kaiser students are experiencing homelessness, and that number is growing. Many homeless students between the ages of 11 and 19 are without parents, and right now, there are five people in the district working with them. The district is hoping to hire more. Advocates with a federally funded program helping provide students with transportation, hygiene, and school supplies say the basics really make a difference and it can be very embarrassing or it can set them apart from other students. So we want to remove anything that sets these kids apart as different. It's not just druggies on the street. There are families who are in your neighborhood who are affected by this. District leaders say a lack of affordable housing in Salem is a huge issue that plays into this. But despite the challenges, in recent years, district officials say the graduation rate, which includes homeless students, has increased by 8%. Next month, the U.S. Supreme Court could rule on a case that would impact how cities all across the country deal with homelessness. The case started in Southern Oregon, where homeless people sued the city of Grants Pass. The suit alleges Grants Pass's anti-camping ordinances, which include fines for sleeping in any park or any public space, violate constitutional rights. A lower court sided with the homeless plaintiffs, and now the U.S. Supreme Court is set to hear arguments on April 22nd. Officials in other cities want the U.S. Supreme Court to overturn that lower court's ruling. If that happens, Portland's daytime camping ban could go, to, uh, could go into effect after a different lawsuit had actually halted it. And check this out. We've got an update to tell you about. The Rose City Book Pub has reached its fundraising goal. Owners were hoping to raise 15,000 bucks. The hope that the money will help them stay afloat. They were struggling since the pandemic, so they came up with the idea of an auction. Customers chipped in everything from dinner to ukulele lessons. Rose City Book Pub is part bookstore, part bar, part cafe. It also does open mics and book reading events for kids. You know, this is pretty cool because we covered the story on Monday as the auction was kicking off, and we thought, oh, that's a nice idea. Right. Hope it works. I yeah. mean, it worked well, uh, as you mentioned, already reaching their goal. And it mm -hmm. kind of, to me, is not just about that particular business, but maybe it gives other businesses some inspirations on ways to get out of a hole. Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I haven't changed my numbers. By golly, I refuse to change the forecast numbers. Look at me. I'm taking a stance. Aggressive. For this. I'm in favor of this sunny, warm <laughs> weekend. Good I'm for you. Yeah, the we, yeah, we like we've that. We got your back, Rod. Okay. I don't think you need it, but we've got your back. Thank you. We're on my side here with this uh, sunny warm up. <laughs> 64 tomorrow, 70 Friday, 73 Saturday, 73 Sunday. Again, probably not looking at records because it was really warm back in March of 1947. This is something I looked at. Longest, if this all comes true, longest dry streak expected since late November. I found this to be surprising, even for us. Since December 1st, only two times, only twice, did we go three days in a row with no rain. That is crazy. That's nuts, right? This time, at least five days, and maybe, maybe six or seven. So it has been a while since we've allowed things to really dry out. Now, some of you have been asking about the coast by some of you. I mean, those of you I bumped in at, to at uh, Costco the other day. <laughs> Sunny skies here. Friday, 64 to 68. Saturday, 65 to 70. Sunday, 60 to 65. Now. The wind flow is not dominant, and when the wind flow is not dominant, it does open the door for westerlies to kick in from the Pacific. So I think there is some question. It, there is a pathway towards it not being as warm as I'm showing here. There is a pathway to maybe by Sunday, let's say, starting to get some cloudiness at the coast. But right now, 
All of the modeling is really insistent that it will be sunny at the coast and temperatures will be 60 or better from Friday through Sunday. So we're watching that. Uh, up at Timberline, it's dry right now. You can see a lot of snow piled up. Uh, again, their base is something like 136 inches on the ground. The snowpack, by the way, they picked up 16 yesterday. The snowpack, by the way, is back up to 89, 89% of normal to date. So that's good news. It's cold up there, 20. Chris showed you Highway 26 that's snow covered, but improving conditions with daytime heating coming in a dry day developing over the Cascades. This big high is the one that will eventually migrate over us and be right on top of us and give us the sunny, warm weekend. Again, there are some lingering showers out there right now. I think once we get past mid morning, the radar will become clean. And most of us, in fact, have already seen our final raindrop for a while. It's 37 in Astoria, 41 in Salem and Portland. Kelso, you've slipped down close to freezing here at 34. It is freezing out east. John Day's at 30 this morning. Future cast across the state showing the dry weather coming, generally partly cloudy skies. There's the clear skies that we'll get into tomorrow. And here's the seven day, 54 today, kind of where we've been. And then noticeably warmer tomorrow after a chilly start. Some of you will be freezing tonight. But in the afternoon, 64, and then Friday, we hit 70. This is my forecast. I'm quite proud of it, actually. <laughs> hug it. Hug it if you can like I, it. Can I hug the forecast? Yes. Okay, Drew, your turn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I was kind of enjoying that still. Uh, but I also enjoy this. The Chris McGinnis segment known as Driving Me Crazy. Chris always does a great job with these. And this morning, it's all about freeway exits. The way to get off the freeway. The way not to get off the freeway. Chris will cover all of this next here on Sunrise.